Hi, my name is Darren Mostyn, and in this episode, we're going to be looking at my 10 favorite things that will improve your workflow in the edit page. And this was quite a common request in the comments. So as you all know, I do read the comments and I'm delivering once again uh, what you want to see. If you're new here and you like this content, uh, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. And if you don't want to subscribe, that's fine. But I do have a playlist and it's full of free episodes. Uh, all to do with killer tips on DaVinci Resolve. So check those out. And in the meantime, let's go and have a look at my top 10 in the edit workflow. So tip number one is selection follows playhead. So if I'm on a clip, I can open up the inspector and make any changes that I want. So I might want to zoom in a little bit and move the image over and then go to my next shot. So I'm just going to use my up and down arrow keys. And again, just make a little tweak to that. Let's just zoom in a little bit. You might want to do a bit of cropping, something like that. Next shot, next shot, etc. The inspector is updating as we move to each clip. Now, if we have a clip selected and do the same thing, it still updates as we move through our shots because the selection is following it. However, if we move our playhead, the selection stays where it is. And you could go to this shot here now and move the zoom and nothing happens because the selection has been left behind because I moved the playhead. And you can override this in the timeline and just say timeline selection follows playhead. And then anytime I move the playhead, the selector follows with it. So tip number two is working with multiple bins. The moment we've got this one bin open cycling and we can look at it in icon mode or list mode. And to open a second bin, if you just right hand click on one and say open as new window, you then get a second bin window and you can choose whichever bin you want that to be. And I could add a third one as well. So if I just right hand click again, say open as new window and you don't see the third one until you go up to workspace and choose another media pool window. So there we go. So I've got three bins open now and I can make each of them a different thing. And you can change these to be icon mode and all that sort of stuff, but they look a little bit cluttered. So I'm going to close those down. And what I'm going to do is utilize this trick, which is if I just click on one bin and if I command click a second bin, it temporarily adds it to the first bin. So you just see the contents of the two bins in one list and I can command a third one. And I've now got those three bins viewed in just one list. And as soon as I click on another bin, it goes back to its original properties. So that's a really useful little tip. So tip number three is using the edit index to help us find clips. If we click on the edit index here and what you've basically got is an EDL. So this is the edit decision list, i.e. it's the clip order of my timeline. Okay. So these are all the clips in order on my timeline. So as I move through, you see that they update on the edit index and I can double click any one of these. You've got V for video and A for audio. So I can double click any one of these and the cursor will jump to that point. Now we can use this to our advantage because I can filter this edit index. So if I click on here and say, for example, show clip colors, I've labeled the interview as teal so that I've changed the clip color to be teal. And if I click that, I can now see all the instances of that interview. So that's really useful tool. Just to put it back, just say show all and you're back where you started. This is also useful if you're conforming for a grade and you've got offline clips, because what you can do is say show offline clips. And we haven't got any in this instance, but that would give you a list of all the clips that are offline. And then you can use the source time codes to try and fix that. So tip number four is annotation. There's a shot down here that's got a traffic cone in it there, and it's a little bit ugly in the shot. So I actually want to remove that in Fusion later. So what I'm going to do is mark the clip. Now, instead of just putting a marker down, what I'm actually going to do is annotate. So if I go to my annotations down here, I can choose the thickness of the brush and the color of it. So let's make it bright yellow. And I'm literally going to draw around it. And that puts a marker for me automatically on the clip. Now, when I finish my edit or grade, I'm going to search for all my markers and just check them off one at a time to check that I've done all the jobs that I wanted to do. So that will need just dropping into fusion and remove the cone. So tip number five is ripple timeline marker. What I want to do is just go to here and there's an audio cue that I want to mark up. So I'm just going to play my sheet through pretty outstanding. And just there on that beat, I want to just put a mark. And that's going to be a reference point for me to use in a minute. So if we go up to our timeline menu, you'll see here there's a thing called ripple timeline markers and it's currently selected. And what this means is when I go to trim mode and just do a trim, let me just zoom in a bit. If I do a trim here, you'll see that the timeline marker is moving with the edit. Now, if I just undo that and deselect 
that. The problem I've got is I don't want that to move because it's an audio cue. So what I want to be able to do is ripple this edit and the audio is not moving. So I want the marker to stay lined up on that beat. So that is how to do that. If I just go to timeline and deselect ripple timeline markers, the marker will stay fixed on the timeline. So tip number six is a trick you can do when you're slip and slide editing. So I'm just going to close down this inspector so we get a larger window. And I'm going to go over to this shot here, which I've already marked up. So in this shot, the guy comes around the bend and you'll see a bridge appear. So let me just play the shot. But I want to see the bridge where that music changes. So I've marked up the point here where the music changes. And what we need to do now is just slip the shot so we don't see this guy here, but we see the start of the bridge. So I'm going to slip edit. So I'm not going to change the edit points here and here. I'm just going to slip within the shot. So make sure you're in trim mode and you need to trim in the top half to slip and the bottom half to slide. And what I do is start moving the shot. So you see the white handles on here show me how much trim I've got to play with. And as I move the shot through, you see at the top, you'll see the mark in point and the top right is the out point. But I can't actually see where the bridge is going to be because I'm in the middle of the shot. So my music cue is in the middle of this edit. So in order to see exactly where I'll be according to the playhead, if you press shift, you actually see the frame that you'll be on. So now when I slip and slide the shot, I can frame it up to line up with the playhead. So there's the bridge. And if I let go now, what happens is, a little bit further back, is that the bridge will appear on that music cue. So let's just play that back. So that's worked for me. That's, we now see the bridge on the music cue and that's by pressing shift so we can see the exact frame that the playhead is on. So tip number seven is quick disable and enable. So if I just go back down my timeline a little bit, I'm just gonna come out of trim mode and I've got here an interview with some cutaways. And at this point here, I've actually got a second choice of cutaway and I've not quite decided which one to use yet. So I want to leave them all in place, but I want to be able to enable and disable them really quickly. So if I just highlight this one and press D, that will disable it momentarily. So I can now see the layer beneath it. And same here, if I press D again, that one's now disabled. And I've decided that I don't want to see the interview there. I would like to see this shot. So I'm going to press D again and that will enable it. And I'm going to leave this one in place just in case I decide to maybe use this shot later in the timeline. And then I can go back and use this cutaway as an option. So it's a really convenient way of just stacking my cutaways and choosing which one I want. So tip eight is to do with transition presets. So if we go to our effects library, and have a look at our video transitions. We've got a cross dissolve here with a red mark next to it. That means it's the current default transition when I'm using shortcuts. Now, if I just drag and drop that onto an item here, you'll see if I click it, we can see in the inspector that it's one second duration. Now, if I want to create a 12 frame default transition, what you need to do is set it in here. So I'm gonna say 12 and apply that. And now if I right hand click on this, I can say, create transition preset. Okay, and I'm gonna call it 12 frame. So it's cross dissolve preset 12 frame. Say okay, and that now appears in my users, which is down here. So cross dissolve preset 12 frames. And if I want to make that the default, I can right hand click on it and say set as standard transition. So to apply that as a standard transition, I need to go to the edit point that I want to work at and enable it. So if you press V, that will enable the edit and then press Command T to apply the effect. So that's now a 12 frame dissolve on that edit point. Now what it's done is gone to the right hand side of that edit point. So the dissolve starts at the cut. And the reason for that is due to the trim mode that I selected. So let me undo that again. And if I press U, you can decide which side of the edit the dissolve is going to go to. So this will be start at cut, this will be end at cut, and this will be uh, center on cut. Okay, so U just toggles between these three modes. So if I want to center on cut, I go like this, press Command and T, and there's my 12 frame dissolve centered on cut. And if you want to apply multiple dissolves, you can select your edit points and press Command T. And that will apply the default transition, sorry. So it's not just dissolves, it can be any of the effects can be a default transition. So tip number nine, we're looking at match framing. So if I just deselect those, if we go back onto our cutaways that we were working on earlier, if I put my playhead in the middle here and double click here, that allows me to match frame 
the shot even though there's a shot above it. Now if I didn't double click, you can press F for match frame and F will take the topmost layer and match frame it. So if I want to match frame this layer, the best way and easiest way instead of disabling this is to just simply double click it and then that match frames to source. Now another trick with the match frame, uh, if I go to this shot here, if I go in the middle of it, if I press F, again the shortcut for match frame, it will load it into my source viewer and if I press F again, it will find any other instances of that shot in my timeline. So let's press F again and you see that it found three shots. So it's one, two, three, three instances of that particular frame. So that's also a quick and easy way to see if you've used that shot anywhere else in the timeline. So just before I show you tip number 10, I just wanted to say a huge thank you. I launched this channel only 10 weeks ago and I've already got two and a half thousand subscribers. So it's quite unbelievable. I really do appreciate it. And thank you for all your positive comments. And I basically can't wait to record more episodes for you. So I'm gonna keep them coming and thank you very much. So look after yourselves. Here's tip number 10 and I'll see you in the next episode. So tip number 10 is stop after playback. So currently when I'm playing a clip, let's just play this one here. I like the challenge. I like to try to fix go through. rules that other bike shots. And when I press stop, the playhead stops and it stays at that point. Now I can choose to change that by going to playback and say stop and go to last position. And what it'll do now is it'll play the clip and when I press stop, it goes back to the point where it was. So if we start here. I really like to, I like the challenge. I like to try to fix bicycles. That and now I press stop, the playhead goes back to where it was. And then if you wanted to assign that as a keyboard shortcut, just go to the keyboard customization. And if you go down here to the application, go to the playback menu here, search for the word stop. And there it is.